hi guys it's eve so today is gonna be just a solo video i'm doing it all by myself today because i'm actually answering a question that i've had which is just a personal experience for me so i'm gonna be answering the question today the question is you've probably seen from the title it's how i'm able to go to korea and study as a foreigner student so after we made the announcement that i'm going to study in korea i'm going to yonsei university i've had a lot of people asking me how i was able to do that which is totally valid because it's a really cool experience so i can understand why people would want to know so today i'm going to tell you how i was able to do it a lot of people have been asking to do like I want to study there full time, do my full course for three years. I'm just going for one year. I'm doing a study abroad year. So that's what I'm going to be talking about my experience. I can't talk for other experiences. I'm just going to be talking about what I am able to do for the one year study abroad. The first part of this video, I'm obviously going to be talking about how I was able to do it, my process. I'm going to give you guys some tips that people have given me about if you're going to study abroad in Korea or stuff like that. And then stay tuned to the end because I'm going to include some clips that I've been filming over the past month of me applying for university and like doing all the documents and that kind of thing. So it kind of takes you on the process with me so you can see what it's like behind the scenes. So yeah, let's get started. So just for some context, I just finished my second year of university in the UK and I'm going to Korea for my third year. So I will study there from September to July, so a full year of study. This was an optional year for me, but I could only do it in my third year. I couldn't do it earlier. You can only do it earlier if it's mandatory, but mine was just optional. I chose to do it. I will be adding an extra year onto my university, so instead of doing the standard three years like some of my friends I'll be doing four years obviously I have to pay extra to do this I'm not getting it completely free but it is a lower cost that I'm able to do it I'm currently a University of Leeds student. This university is a university in England and it is an international university, which is very important and comes to my first point. If you study at an international university, it will automatically be so much easier for you to have the opportunity to do study abroad and have the opportunity to go to Korea. That means they have a lot of partners with other universities internationally around the world. So I'm gonna insert a clip here. This is on the University of Leeds web page and you can see they have so many university links all across the globe and I could choose to go to any of these universities the fact that there's so many options is so cool because even if I didn't get to, into Korea I could have gone somewhere in Europe or in America or Australia there's so many options so I honestly think choosing an international uni will just broaden your horizons so much Also, one other good thing about international unis, I'm just going to throw this in here, that's one of the reasons how I met my boyfriend who is a Korean man, because he was able to come to my university as an exchange student. International universities accept a lot of international students, so that means that you'll be experiencing more cultures, it won't just be people from your country around you at uni, there'll be so many people doing a study abroad years or even being like doing the full four, three years. If you are not currently in university, but you do potentially want to do a study abroad year, I would 100% say do your research and try and get into an international university because that will just be so much easier. Other universities that aren't international may offer study abroad years to Korea, but it's not as guaranteed. In last November, I signed up for the study abroad program. Now you're probably thinking, what is a study abroad program? So obviously, like I said at the start, I can only speak off my experience. Every university's study abroad program might be a bit different, but this is what my home university's one is like. I sign up to my university and say, I would love to do a year of studying in a different country. And then my university will look at my grades, my attendance, everything like this 
and then they will decide if I'm a good candidate to go to a different country. Because I knew I wanted to do a study abroad year in Korea, I signed up for the study abroad program at my home university as soon as it opened. And I'm so glad I did because I did get into the study abroad program. I had to have good grades, good attendance to show I was a good student and I got into the study abroad program. Once you're accepted into the study abroad program, that is when you will do your research about universities abroad and you will do your research about where you want to go. I personally had five options that I could choose and I put all of them to be universities in Korea because I knew I wanted to go to Korea. I've always wanted to go so it was just the perfect opportunity, right? So the fact that I was able to sign up to my home university's study abroad program already gave me such a boost because I had that support from the university. I had people I could contact if I had any questions. I had people who were emailing me about different advice that they'd give. So it was really a nice thing that I had that support. I had people who was working with me. So this was all going on about October, November last year when I got my place in the study abroad program and then I was deciding what university to go to. So I put Yonsei University as my first choice. It's actually quite competitive to get in there so I didn't think I'd get it but I did and I'm really happy that I did. I got my results in about January time. We did post a video on it, I'll link it up here so you can go watch our reaction. But even if I didn't get Yonsei, the fact that I was in the study abroad program means that I was guaranteed to go to at least some university across the world. And also they probably will guarantee you to go to Korea because at least for my university, they allowed like 40 to 50 students to go to Korea. And actually there's only 18 of us going to Korea this year with me. So there is so many spaces available for other students. And if you're wondering what the study abroad program is, please do your research and find a, if your university has a study abroad program because honestly it has been a lifesaver and it has allowed me to be able to go to Korea because I think without the study abroad program I probably wouldn't have been able to go. Once I got a place in Yonsei I had to officially apply to Yonsei University. It wasn't 100% confirmed because this was just my home university saying, we want to send you. From January getting my place till now, I have just been working on applying to Yonsei and getting all my like documents and everything sorted. So obviously visa is one of the last steps that you have to do. You have to apply for Yonsei, show that you're a legal student, show your grades, why you want to study there. It's a lot of little things like that. You will see that in the next part of the video when I show you me applying. But once I started applying to Yonsei, the university themselves, I was in direct contact with them like through emails and stuff and my home university kind of left me to it. So it did feel kind of scary. It's so hard to contact a different university from a different country with a time zone difference and everything like that, language barrier. It's really hard to do it. So that is basically the whole story of how I was able to apply and how I'm able to go and study in Korea for a full year. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to answer people's questions because I know some people have been asking me how they can do it for the full three years or how they can go to a, career a Korean university without being at a current university in their home country. And I'm really sorry, but I can only speak on my own experience. And I was very fortunate to go to an international university and have that study abroad program support. So honestly, without that, I don't think I would be able to go. So I'm very lucky to be in the situation that I am. I think having this knowledge of like, yes, I know I want to do this is really important when you start university. If it is a last minute decision, it can be quite hard to make it work. There's a lot of things I've been working on for like the past two years for it. I've been doing research about Korea itself. I've obviously been working hard for my grades. I've been learning a bit of the Korean language. I knew from the beginning I wanted to do it. And I knew from the beginning I wanted to go to Korea. So I think knowing that you definitely want to do it is really good to know at the start of your university so then you can work on it throughout your years. Another thing is I currently study digital media. So like media as a whole at university. Just one way I was able to have so many options for going abroad. Depending on what you study at university, you will be limited. If the university you want to go to does not have any classes that match what you're currently doing, 
you can't go which is kind of sad it does make sense so for me i had to choose media classes and thankfully yonsei did have quite a lot but one of my friends she wanted to go to korea but she didn't have the classes that match so she couldn't so that is one thing if you are considering if you know you want to study abroad consider what classes you want to take because if you take for example english literature they might not do something equivalent in korea because they would do korean literature right try and be a bit more broad with what you study if you know you want to study in a different country another tip i want to give i know i have mentioned this but learning the language is so important if you're going to study there for a year it is not compulsory a lot of universities if not all universities in the major city of seoul do have classes in english so you will be fine for classes but i think it's so important to learn the language because just like communicating in daily life with people and if you're living there for a year it's really good to know the basics i'm going there with like very basic knowledge i know kind of how to say my name, how to order something in a shop, that kind of thing, right? But some of the other people I'm going to study who are also going to study in Korea with me, they don't know any Korean. And actually they're kind of worried because just little things like being in a shop or if someone comes up to you and talks to you, you don't have a clue what they're saying. So I think it's really important to study the language. So that's all from me. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and comment if you're actually going to study in Korea because I'm really interested. I'm sorry we have a lot of Korean viewers on our channel and I'm sorry this video will not be helpful to you at all. Um, but I've had some questions from international viewers so I thought I'd do a video for them. Thanks for watching this little part. Please stay tuned because there will be more to follow. This is me actually doing the whole process of applying for university and working on my Yonsei application. I hope you enjoyed this little next part and I'll see you in our next video. Bye guys! I mean, another thing for my study abroad, I'm choosing my modules today, which I thought would be easy, but it's so hard. Let me show you. This is the system they use to check modules. This is so confusing. Like, there's so much information. Compared to British universities, how their websites are done, this is so different, so it's so confusing. I have found a couple that I want to take. I have to take ones which are related to my major and I also have to take Korean. But I've wrote down which ones I want to take and I have to decide what times I want them to be. I'm trying to fit them so that I have all my classes on the same days and then I get more days off rather than having like one class every day. So please ignore the handwriting. This is just my notes. But as you can see, I've highlighted all the days and like I've worked it. I think this is how they work out. Hey guys, it's been a little while since I last filmed something for this vlog and today I'm going to submit my application to Yonsei University. So obviously I've applied for the study abroad program at my university, but I need to like formally apply to Yonsei so I can become an official student there. Like, isn't that crazy? I'll be a Yonsei student after this gets accepted, which is, I can't believe it. It took a while because it needed a lot of financial evidence, documents, academic records, all stuff like that. But finally, I think I have everything. So I'm finally gonna submit this today.